क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम ईकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन चैप्टर ऑफ रेशियो एनालिसिस वी आर रिक्वायर्ड टू अरेंज profit and loss account as well as balance sheet in a vertical format which is suitable for calculation of ratios today we'll understand how to arrange balance sheet and income statement in vertical format and what are the important ratios which we are required to used in the chapter of ratio analysis first we'll start with balance sheet in vertical arrangement of balance sheet the first part of balance sheet is called as source of funds and the second part of balance sheet is called as use of funds or application of funds here we are required to see that sources of funds should be equal to use of funds that is application of funds in source of funds we have first shareholders fund in shareholders fund will have share capital equity share capital preference share capital to equity share capital we are required to add reserves and surplus reserves and surplus will have general reserve capital reserve securities premium capital redemption reserve dividend equalization fund we are required to deduct from the reserve fictitious assets or miscellaneous expenditure not written off for example preliminary expenses not written off or we may have discount on issue of debentures or shares or discount on redemption of shares or debentures we may have profit and loss account debit balance that is loss which is required to be deducted from reserves and surplus preference share capital will be added and finally we'll get the amount of owners fund or proprietors fund next part is borrowed funds where we will have secured loans and unsecured loans borrowed funds consist of secured loans and unsecured loans secured loans means on which some security is given by the company ensuring the creditors that their money will be at their money will not be at risk for example assets of the companies we are given as a security to debenture holders so debenture is an example of secured loans bank loans are normally secured because banks they give loan by taking some asset as a mortgage unsecured loan means on which there is no security given by the company for the repayment of loan for example public deposits is an unsecured loan loan from directors it may be unsecured loan so total borrowed funds and proprietors fund we get the first part of the balance sheet that is total capital employed the second part of balance sheet is use of fund that is application of funds the first item we have fixed assets in fixed assets we are required to include all tangible and intangible assets goodwill patents copyrights those intangible assets will be there as well as tangible assets plant and machinery land and building furniture and fixtures equipments vehicles all fixed assets are added over here we are required to take wdv of the fixed asset means if there is any provision for depreciation we are required to subtract next we have debtors bills receivable and other quick assets total quick asset that is we have here current assets debtors bills receivable cash bank balance prepaid expenses these are called as current assets they are having life of less than 1 year they are converted into cash within a period of 1 year here stock and prepaid expenses are not considered as quick asset otherwise all current assets are quick assets then we are required to deduct current liabilities that is creditors outstanding expenses bills payable those are called as what current liabilities overdraft and pre received income 
आर नॉट क्विक लाइबिलिटीज अदरवाइज ऑल करेंट लाइबिलिटीज आर क्विक लाइबिलिटीज फ्रॉम करेंट एसेट विल बी डिडक्टिंग करेंट लाइबिलिटीज देयर बाय वी कम अक्रॉस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वर्किंग कैपिटल फिक्स एसेट्स प्लस लॉन्ग टर्म इन्वेस्टमेंट्स प्लस वर्किंग कैपिटल वी गेट हियर टोटल एसेट्स दैट इज टोटल कैपिटल एम्प्लॉयड capital employed and total assets should match that is sources of funds and application of funds in balance sheet there are various items we have when we use any two items in same balance sheet to calculate a ratio it is called as balance sheet ratio there are various balance sheet ratios we can calculate to judge about various parameters of the company like productivity solvency liquidity capital structure etc let us understand those important balance sheet ratios number 1 current ratio the formula of current ratio is current asset upon current liabilities this ratio shows short term solvency position of company quick or liquid ratio that is quick ratio is equal to quick asset upon quick liabilities quick asset means current asset minus stock minus prepaid expenses quick liabilities means current liabilities minus overdraft minus income received in advance quick or liquid ratio shows short term liquidity position of company stock working capital ratio closing stock divided by working capital multiplied by 100 this ratio shows the management of working capital by the business it also shows inventory control of the company proprietary ratio proprietor's fund divided by total assets total asset means here fixed asset plus long term investment plus current asset this ratio shows long term solvency position of company debt equity ratio debt divided by equity borrowed fund divided by owners fund borrowed fund divided by proprietors fund this ratio shows long term solvency position of company this shows the balance between own fund and borrowed fund capital gearing ratio this ratio shows capital structure of company capital with fixed income preference share capital debenture bank loans divided by capital with flexible income like equity share capital plus reserve minus fictitious asset that is equity share holders fund capital gearing ratio shows whether company is high geared or low geared that means whether company is taking advantage of trading on equity or not after discussion of balance sheet let us understand vertical income statement vertical income statement means if we have trading and profit and loss account in t format we can convert it into vertical format suitable for analysis it starts with gross sales that is credit sales plus cash sales we get total sales from total sales we are required to deduct cost of goods sold we have to add opening stock plus purchases credit purchases cash purchases minus purchase returns plus direct expenses less closing stock we get cost of goods sold from sales if we minus cost of goods sold we get gross margin or gross profit from gross profit we are required to deduct operating expenses there we have administration expenses selling expenses administration expenses means all office expenses like office salaries office lighting printing and stationery printing and stationery depreciation on office furniture depreciation of any other asset used in office like computers that will be included in administration expenses next selling expenses advertisement salesman commission showroom rent carriage outwards depreciation on distribution van depreciation on delivery van 
those expenses will be included in selling expenses operating expenses also have one component of finance expense but it should be excluding interest on borrowed fund as per accounting standard so administration selling and finance expenses excluding interest will be total operating expenses which will be deducted from the gross profit to arrive at operating profit that is net operating profit before interest and tax to this will be adding non operating incomes and deducting non operating expenses and losses non operating income means during the year if company has sold some asset or investment and it has made profit that profit will be added which is considered as non operating income similarly during the year if there is loss on sale of asset or investment it will be deducted it is considered as non operating losses and expenses finally we arrive at profit before interest and tax from profit before interest and tax we are required to deduct interest that is finance cost to arrive at net profit before tax from net profit before tax we are required to deduct provision for tax to arrive at profit after tax from profit after tax we can do appropriation first we will have to add opening balance of profit or loss that is previous year closing balance of profit will be added to net profit after tax if there is loss in previous year that will be deducted here so that we can get the amount total amount of profit available for appropriation from that we can deduct preference dividend equity dividend transfer to reserves thereby we get what profit available for equity shareholders equity dividend retain earnings final amount of surplus is transferred to balance sheet which is called as retained earnings we have discussed vertical format of income statement let us understand some of the important ratios relating to income statement when ratio is calculated by taking any two elements of income statement it is called as revenue statement ratio or income statement ratio first gross profit ratio that is gross profit divided by net sales multiplied by 100 this is profitability ratio it is it should be high considering the situation of company that is higher is better that can be considered as standard for gross profit ratio it depends upon the industry standard that company should try to achieve target of that standard which is set called as what industry standard next operating ratio that is cost of goods sold plus operating expenses divided by net sales multiplied by 100 this is cost ratio it should be as far as possible it should be less so that there can be more profit operating ratio consists of cost of goods sold and also it consists of operating expenses third we have expense ratios administrative selling or finance expenses divided by net sales multiplied by 100 these are expense ratios it should be as far as possible minimum operating profit ratio operating profit divided by net sales multiplied by 100 this shows the operational efficiency of company net profit ratio net profit before tax divided by net sales multiplied by 100 this is profitability ratio stock turnover ratio cost of goods sold divided by average stock average stock means opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2 this stock turnover ratio shows control on inventory by the organization it also shows how effectively company is controlling its direct cost when one variable from income statement and one variable from balance sheet is selected that ratio is called as composite ratio let us discuss some of the cases of composite ratio return on investment or capital employed here we are using profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed multiplied by 100 this ratio shows return on 
ओवरऑल रिसोर्सेस और रिटर्न ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट हियर प्रॉफिट बिफोर इंटरेस्ट एंड टैक्स वी आर गेटिंग फ्रॉम इनकम स्टेटमेंट एंड कैपिटल एम्प्लॉयड वी आर गेटिंग फ्रॉम बैलेंस शीट रिटर्न ऑन प्रोपराइटर्स फंड नेट प्रॉफिट आफ्टर टैक्स डिवाइडेड बाय प्रोपराइटर्स फंड मल्टीप्लाइड बाय हंड्रेड हियर प्रोपराइटर्स फंड मीन्स शेयर कैपिटल plus reserves minus fictitious asset this information we get from balance sheet and net profit after tax we are getting from income statement this ratio shows how much proprietors are earning on their investment return on equity capital there are two types of capital equity capital and preference share capital from net profit after tax payment of preference dividend is made the balance amount of profit is enjoyed by equity shareholders which is called as return on equity share capital net profit after tax minus preference dividend divided by equity shareholders fund multiplied by 100 equity shareholders fund means equity share capital plus reserves and surplus minus fictitious asset dividend payout ratio it shows the relationship between equity shareholders total earnings and the amount of dividend paid by the company formula is equity dividend divided by profit available to equity shareholders multiplied by 100 debt service ratio how much amount of interest company is paying in relation to its overall earnings whether earnings are sufficient to pay interest or not that is indicated by this ratio profit before interest and tax divided by interest that is the formula for debt service ratio counterpart of this ratio is debt service coverage ratio here along with interest we are also considering the part of principal which is to be repaid with installment cash profit divided by interest plus installments now cash profit means to the net profit after tax will be adding the amount of non cash expenses like depreciation similarly interest will be added to arrive at the figure of cash profit this ratio shows how effectively efficiently company can repay its installments of loan and interest debtors turnover ratio this ratio shows how effectively company is employing its receivable management policy how creditors are collected by the company that is indicated by debtors turnover ratio credit sales divided by average debtors plus bills receivable creditors turnover ratio this is this ratio shows how company is making payment to its suppliers credit purchases divided by average creditors plus bills payable these ratios are called as composite ratios because they are making use of information from income statement as well as balance sheet each ratio has got some purpose it has got some function each ratio shows relationship between two important variables each ratio we can have a standard ratio which can be compared with the actual ratio of the company by comparison we can know the position of company in relation to solvency profitability productivity etc thanks for watching this video stay in tune with ikida and subscribe to our channel ikida thank you